We brought in engine 33 and positioned it so that we could get into the plane. Um, chutes were deployed. Passengers were still coming down off of the chutes. We climbed up the uh, chute also and got into the plane. We encountered fire initially as we got into the fuselage, which we knocked down just as a temporary stay, just to give us more time. We knew that this event, uh, we, were, we were not running out of time, but the, the conditions were possibly going to change very rapidly for us. As we proceeded down the fuselage, we, uh, we, I felt that the primary search was completed in the fashion that we had not passed any passengers up in that plane. About two-thirds of the way down, uh, Firefighter Kurt asked me if he could run ahead and check to see what was going on at the back of the plane. The conditions as we went down the plane were getting better. Most of the fire was in the front of the plane. So I said yes, I you know, grabbed the line. I also turned around and saw that there was fire impinging between the top of the, um, the fuselage and what we call the skin of the aircraft. So uh, just a quick knock down there. Firefighter Kurt uh, reported back that he had found four passengers in the back of the plane. I radioed that we had four uh, passengers stuck in the, or trapped in the back of the plane. Well, two of the extrications happened through the rear of the aircraft where the hole was created when they lost the tail section. Uh, there were two uh, non-ambulatory patients that we put on backboards, and uh, one other person was uh, just basically taken out of the plane. The, the conditions inside the plane were changing very rapidly. When we first got back there and saw these people, it was actually pretty clear back there. There was not a lot of smoke. There was not a lot of fire. But by the time we removed the final victim, the conditions were that the fire was banking down on us. We had heavy black smoke. So I feel very lucky and blessed that we were able to get those people out in that time.